begin, we're going to view the MSP dashboard. Effectively, what's needed to be known at this point is that Avic is a multi-tenanted solution. You can manage all of your clients in one place and rapidly deploy. At the MSP level, there's also some high-level management features, like managing users, um, even managing alert templates as well. But for the sake of this exercise, we'll wrap up with this information because the meat of the information lies within a client deployment. So let's start by taking a look at a client site. While this loads, I'll start by talking about the deployment architecture within Avic. There are a few different deployment models, but regardless, the architecture is the same. You have a single collector that's deployed on site, and that collector is effectively just a proxy to our cloud. Now, that collector can be deployed as a Windows service, so it can run as a native Windows service on a workstation or server. It can be deployed as a virtual appliance, or it can actually also run as on bare metal in case you wanted to install on something like an Intel Nook or a micro PC. Once that collector is deployed, it will then begin to automatically map the client's network. And by that, I mean layer one, layer two, and layer three topology. So the end game here is that you no longer have to manually trace cables or manually parse the CLI. That's all automated. And because the system's always polling, this is a live inventory and live topology of the network. Now, to start, I'll show a few interactions on the map to give a sense of the high-level information that our system collects. So I'll start by hovering over this firewall. We can see here that this is a Cisco ASA. I can see some high-level layer three and layer two info about this device. But most importantly, this is all abstracted out automatically so that any technician can jump on any site and fully immerse themselves and begin troubleshooting. I can even hover over wires to see exactly how devices are connected port to port. So I can see the inside interface on this ASA is plugged into Gigabit Ethernet 111 on this downstream switch stack. And I can even see how this link is configured. Now once again, this is all pulled in automatically for me so that I don't have to have the in-depth domain knowledge to, to do this or to even understand this now. The system automates much of that away. Now, I just showed you a connection between two networking devices, but we can even see connections between devices like PCs. So I can see this workstation is plugged into Gigabit Ethernet 2116 on that switch stack. Now, once the system has discovered the network, it begins to automatically monitor devices based on best practices. So let's start by looking at this firewall. The first important thing to note here is that every entity in Avic has its own profile page. Think of this like a LinkedIn profile page where all of these tabs we see here and all of this content is specific to the type of device I'm looking at. So here we're looking at a firewall with the host name Reese Avic ASA. And once we authenticate with this device, we begin to automatically monitor based on best practices. That's the big takeaway here. The intent is that the system within minutes is automatically and reliably monitoring clients network based on best practices. So I can see for this ASA, we're pulling in things like its inventory information, as well as device bandwidth and its utilization with respect to CPU memory and disk, as well as the interfaces by utilization. And all of this data is stored indefinitely for you so that you can roll back in time and look at historical data as you please. That's true of everything throughout the entire system. All data is stored indefinitely. Now I'm just going to show you the interfaces on this device. So this is equivalent to a show IP interface brief, but you have the luxury of seeing who an interface is connected to and how it's configured. And I can even drill down on an interface and view its specific profile page. So like I said, every network, every device, and every interface has its own profile page. So for this given interface, we're seeing things like its inventory information on the left there. We're seeing its utilization, as well as bandwidth across this interface, and any errors or discards that are occurring. And once again, this information is stored indefinitely for you so that you can roll back in time and look at historical data as you please. 
Now, if I just navigate back to this Cisco ASA, if we have login credentials for this device, we're going to automatically back up the configuration for it. What the system does is it pulls every hour by default, and if we detect even the slightest configuration change, we're going to automatically back up that configuration. The key takeaway here, though, is that the system only backs it up if there is, in fact, a change. So that you don't have to worry about running daily, weekly, or monthly backups, the system automates it. And you can even roll back in time here and look at historical data and configs and compare them to other configs to see what, in fact, has changed. So if I were to scroll through here, I would be able to, to visualize any you know, updates, added configs, removed rules. It will all be visualized there. And once again, it's just ensuring that you have that change management in place so that if something goes wrong, you can see what's changed and you're notified when something in fact does change through Avic Alerts. Now, if I want to remote into a device, I could do that here as well. So if Telnet or SSH is enabled, you can terminal into a device or even launch a remote browser session if a device is typically configured through a GUI. The key thing here is that you no longer have to VPN into a client site um, or track down the IP of a device. The system just works and it fits into your operational workflow and to streamline things as much as possible. Now that we have an understanding of the discovery of the system, as well as the automated monitoring based on best practices, our configuration backup as well, along with the remote management features, the next logical step then is to discuss alerting. So how do we interpret this data and notify you of meaningful things? Right out of the box, the system is pre-configured with about four dozen alerts. Now, all of these alerts can be fully customized. You can add your own, you can edit all of these. But once again, we want to get you up and running and responsibly and confidently managing a client's network within minutes. So the system automatically detects things like network elements going offline, or even broadcast storms, um, or even spanning tree changes or high CPU on the network so that you're on top of these things right away. Um, the system actually automatically detects as well when the internet goes down at a client site, so that you're on top of that internet outage before your clients reach out and start barking at you. And once an alert is generated or, or triggered, we will then notify you about this alert. And there's quite a few options here. You can have an alert go to email or appear on the map you can even send it to tools like Slack or ConnectWise so that they just fit into your current operational workflow. Now to wrap up, let's take a look at some of those high-level management features on the MSP dashboard. Now that we're on the MSP dashboard, you can do things like managing alert templates and users across all of your sites, but I'll start by showing you user management here. So let's take a look at Mary. Mary is our Director of Partner Success here at Avic, and Mary's authorized on all of these tenants. But if I would like, I could restrict Mary's access so that she only sees a single site or, or few sites and is a read-only user, for example. Now, the reason this is important is if you do co-managed IT or if you would like to grant access to your client to see their site, you can do so and restrict it such that they only have access to their site. And as an extension of that, you can even change the branding. So I can drop in my own company logo here and drop in my color scheme as well, so that for all intents and purposes, this is a you know, fully branded portal of yours that you pass on to your clients. Now those are the, the high level features within Avic. We covered discovery and topology, automated monitoring based on best practices, configuration backups and remote management, as well as the alerting upon those stats, and finally, the high-level management features that you can deploy across all of your tenants. Thank you.